Hello and welcome to 10 Ways to Be a More Mindful Shopper, a More Mindful Stylist, a More Mindful Dresser. You you insert what you want. This is about being a mindful shopper, but also how can you love your style and still save money at the same time by just creating a wardrobe you really love. I really hope these 10 tips will be helpful. Of course, make sure to like and subscribe. And I really do love to see your comments, so make sure you comment below. So my first tip is very general and I apologize. We're going to get more specific as the video goes, but just to start off, if you want to be a more mindful shopper, if you want to save money and love your style at the same time, you have to enjoy the mindful shopping process. It's not just always about that instant gratification of buying something, wearing something, having something. That's how we get into the cycle of wanting, wanting, having, having. Instead, enjoy the process of thinking more about what you want your style to be, getting inspiration from other places, taking screenshots, taking notes on your phone when you see something you like, or if you notice something when you're getting dressed every day that you don't have. As you go through this, enjoy every step of it because that's part of being really mindful is finding that joy and presence in this entire process. You know that really cliche saying where it's like, it's about the journey, not the destination that's kind of what this point is and I'm sorry but it's so true and it's cliche for a reason so enjoy the process enjoy the journey we're gonna have a really great destination this next one also super cliche it just it has to be said and it's an important part of the process it's not step one it is step 1a 2a 3a it's always step a of every step of the process and that is just purge 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 get it out if you are noticing something you're not wearing get it out goodbye see you later if you think i might wear or maybe i wear it a couple times a year fine keep it i don't care the point is to have a wardrobe that you love, you need to have pieces in it that you do love and do wear. Now, maybe you love it and you just don't wear it. That is a very important mindful note to take that this is a piece that you can appreciate, but that you do not wear. And so maybe it's not part of your wardrobe and it's just something you admire from afar. But purging is something that has to happen all the time. You're never done purging. Constantly look through your things and make sure that everything you have in your entire life, but just everything you have in your closet is something that you wear. For me, it's usually shoes. Shoes are things I struggle to purge because what if that perfect outfit comes along and it's like I have the perfect pair of shoes, but if I'm not wearing it, it's not making me happy. It's taking up room and someone else could be wearing it. So purge, 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 purge. Now, while you're purging, it's gonna probably be really helpful to have a color palette. It, just having a color palette for your wardrobe in general is really helpful. But I will also say it is really helpful when you are shopping. If you find something you might be considering that you like, if it doesn't fit within your color palette, you're not gonna wear it. You want a color palette that's really easily easily interchanged so that you can pair any of those colors together, ideally. Now I understand if you have a really colorful color palette and colors look really good on you, but maybe there's one color combination that really clashes and doesn't look good, then that's fine. But in general, you want all of your colors to work really well together because then that'll feel like you, it'll feel like your brand. And as you're scrolling through, whether you're online shopping or if you're shopping in person, you can scan the racks, you can scan online and you can see what is actually going to be something that's fitting within your current style. So I'm a proponent of having four or five colors in your color palette. Now that doesn't mean every single one of your grays has to be the exact same tone of gray. That can be really limiting sometimes, especially with certain colors, but in general, having gray. Now, sometimes that's a light gray, sometimes that's a dark gray. Beige, sometimes that's a really light beige, almost a cream, and sometimes that's a really dark beige, almost a brown. There can be some variations within that, which can create more options especially at different times of year. And I know finding your color season has been really popular on TikTok. I'm gonna let you decide if that's something you want to buy into. If you wanna just wear colors that you love, whether or not they make your face younger looking or brighter looking, that's up to you. Maybe you love how that looks on you and therefore that becomes your style, but maybe your style doesn't fit into your color wheel. Just wear what you love. But if you want to, totally fine. If you don't want to, also totally fine. Either way, find your colors. 
Once you have your colors, you're gonna need to know your body type and not just your horizontal body type, whether you're an hourglass, rectangle, apple pear, that can be helpful, but also knowing your vertical body type because that's your entire body. And last I checked, your style covers your entire body, not just your shoulders, waist, and hips. So know whether you're a short torso or a long torso or a proportionate torso and what that means for your legs and your feet and your neck and your shoulders, all of that, all of that fits together really well. I've been doing body type videos for a while now and I see so many comments about what are good and bad body types all of those the general categories even though it's a spectrum all three body types long proportionate short all three of them are equally good i'm a short torso and so i do a lot of videos on short torsos we talk a lot about it and a lot of people think it's a really bad thing and i completely understand that all body types have their own unique challenges that can be frustrating sometimes but that doesn't mean our bodies are bad or our body types are bad or that because you're in one particular category that you have a bad body body type. That's, that doesn't exist here. So knowing your body and understanding your body is really important to knowing what style you're going to love on your body. I'm not gonna say that you have to wear certain things if you fall into certain groups, but you might gravitate towards small details that fit your body in a way that you like better. And so with that, when it comes to focusing on your style and being a more mindful shopper, start by focusing on your basics and making sure your basics fit within your body type and your color palette. I feel like so often when it comes to body types, we're looking at, does this blouse work with these bottoms? But what about your basics? What about those tops and t-shirts and jeans that you reach for on a daily basis that are the building blocks? blocks for your style. How do you know that those are fitting within your body type and your colors so that you know that you're going to love those pieces? So once you're there, focus on your basics and then don't forget about your basics. When it comes to every new season, make sure that the basics that you need for that season are checking off in those categories. When cold months start coming around, you're going to want to check your long sleeve collection. When the summer months come around, what are tank tops looking like? Again, we're going to enjoy this entire process and how it repeats throughout the year. The more often you do it, the quicker it will be. If you want it to, like you can totally draw this out for a really long time and enjoy the planning and shopping process and not just the purchasing process. Another part of mindful shopping is looking at the pieces that you wear a lot of and buying more options of those. If you like to wear blazers and you wear a lot of blazers on an everyday basis, like have a big collection of blazers to pull from that fit your body well, that are in your color scheme so that you're ready for anything and that you're feeling like you're still having fun with your wardrobe, with your outfits. Maybe you have summer blazers and fall blazers and winter blazers, but maybe then you don't buy other coats or jackets that you really don't wear all that often. Like if you really like blazers because of that really nice tailored look, then maybe a utility jacket or a trucker jacket isn't going to fit well into your style. Or if when the summertime comes, you love dresses, but you actually don't wear dresses. So let's not buy dresses if, if you're not wearing a lot of those already. But maybe if you do wear a lot of dresses, then making sure that you have all of those colors and that selection that you need there. In my opinion, one of the reasons mindful shopping is so fun is because of the planning process. Who doesn't love planners? Like planning out something, getting organized, getting everything just really dialed in. Now, whether or not you actually put that into action is someone else's video to make, but when it comes to your style, that planning piece is really important. So every season, take a moment and plan your style for that season. What are the current trends? What are the trends that we want to take part in? What are the trends that will easily transition into things we already have? What are the colors that are on trend? Oh, hey, one of those colors is already in my color palette. I should just lean into that a little bit more. And so that makes it really fun. And I have a playlist down below because every season I go through how to plan out your style for that season. So make sure you're subscribed, little shameless plug to make sure you don't miss those videos. The other part of planning helps you think ahead to different highlights of the year. For example, we are in July, so we have Prime Day coming up. And right now that 
Nordstrom anniversary sale is happening. But are there other big sales that happen during different parts of the year? If we're planning out our winter style, we know that after the holidays, there's a lot of things that go on sale because they are trying to make way for spring. So timing is really helpful and to know what sales happen during different times of the year can be really helpful as well. Black Friday is one that comes to mind. Memorial Day sales, any holiday three day weekend sale seems to be a big time of year, but also just weekends in general. Like if you're making an order on a Wednesday, like an online order on a Wednesday, try not to do that because chances are they're going to announce a sale that following Thursday. The mistake I constantly make is buying something on sale the weekend before a holiday sale and then on holiday sale, it goes on even more sale. The other thing I would say about timing is Sundays. A lot of things will go on extra sale on Sundays, particularly clearance, but be wary of clearance sections. To me, and this is just maybe an unpopular opinion, maybe this is just my opinion, so you don't have to take it for everything it's worth, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Clearance sections is just the sections that nobody wants. And so why would I wanna buy something that nobody wants to buy? Now I get that sometimes things go on clearance that you really love and maybe it's just like the time of year has passed and they need to get rid of all this extra stuff. That's fine but just going to the clearance section just to look for a good deal. Usually you're gonna find pieces that are really trendy, that don't fit right. Maybe they are stained. They're, there's just not a whole lot of great stuff in the clearance section. But in general on Sundays, things might get put on extra sale. So just keep an eye out for that, but sometimes that's just clearance. So proceed with caution. Similar note to that only buy things that you really love. Now, sometimes we buy things and we don't know if we're gonna love them or not. You, you try it, you order it online, you try it on, and you're like, eh, but then I have to return it. It's worth it. Return it if you don't love it. Just only keep it if you're like, wow, I love this piece, or this is so great, I love the fabric, I love the color. Make sure that everything you're bringing in is only something that you absolutely love. That is the only way you will create a style that you absolutely love. Now, I completely understand trying to introduce new pieces to your wardrobe, modernizing your look a little bit. Again, proceed with caution, try on a bunch of things with it. Are you actually going to create outfits with it or are you always going to not choose it? I'm a big proponent of trying new things, but again, focusing on what you wear and what you already love and finding slightly different versions of those things versus going completely out of the norm, there's 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 a trade-off there's a give and take i think you need to make sure you're always trying new things because our bodies change our tastes change trends change the way things fit and are made change but if you go too far out of your comfort zone you're not going to wear it so just take baby steps and only keep it if you absolutely love it and then on a similar note, if you want to go out of your comfort zone a little bit, if you want to try something, for me, I recently tried, I had a request to try more wide leg pants because those are really in right now. And in general, I haven't been loving light, wide leg pants because of my body type, but now I found some and I'm really excited to share that find or those finds with my short torso friends when traditionally I've said, I don't like wide leg pants for these reasons. I've found a few that I really like and they have some details on them that make it work for me. But I wouldn't have done that if I didn't know I could easily return it. It felt really low risk to say, I'm gonna try this and if I absolutely hate it, I'm just gonna send it right back. Amazon's really helpful for that. But also if you have local stores or sister stores in your area, a lot of times, returns are a lot easier than you think they are. You just have to give them five minutes of your time. They either already send you the label or you have to do like one or two steps and then you drop it off and it's done. It's worth it, it really is. But make sure you're shopping at places where that process is easy and not difficult because you're definitely not gonna do a difficult return. It's hard enough to do the easy ones. So if you want more specific tips on how to plan your style for each season, I'm going to link my style planning guide playlist right here. Please remember to leave me a comment down below. I really do love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you over here.